Hello, I'm John from the Haunt Informer. And I'm Glenn from Fall Ritual. And this is episode 37 of Fall Informer. And today we have a guest, a scare actor from Field Screams named Logan. And he also plays the butcher chainsaw scare actor character, Butch. So introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Logan. I'm from Field of Screams. I have been there for four years, coming up on four years now. Nice. Yeah. And like having it, doing it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So I'll start the questions, Glenn. All right. Um, so kick it off. Uh, what got you into haunts? Um, going to them, then wanting to be an actor at one. Uh, honestly, as of like five years ago, I'd never been to one. Never been to okay. a haunt. Okay. Never did it. And then my friends convinced me to go to Dorney Park for their... And I just fell in love with doing it doing it and then i actually signed up to do field of screams while waiting in one of the queue lines at dorney park oh uh, okay okay and then and then yeah the saint patty's day saint patty's day event four years ago was nice. my first day doing it and i've been there since that had to be fun starting out with saint patty's day <laughs> yeah yeah did you have like green well, was... and everything <laughs> i i did not oh, okay I did not <laughs> no yeah that was that was my first year doing it and i actually started out in shackles which is no longer there that was the second room technically in den yeah and right. then for the next full season i moved to morgue yes did that for a year and then obviously eventually moved up to chainsaws yes yes exactly and you went to nocturnal too i did i did this is this past season was my first season in Nocturnal. And then next year, I'm thinking about going to Hayride. Just change it up. Nice. Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> yeah, of course. So um, going along with talking about your different characters, do you prefer wearing a silicone mask when you're scare acting, like a sock mask from Zagoni Studios, or one of those cool mouths where it's like the jagged teeth from uh, Inferno? So... It really depends on the day if it's like cold or not. Yeah, silicone all the way. If it's warm out, I go with my normal butch mask that I have, which is just the half mask yeah. with the teeth. Yes, but that that's probably one of my favorites that I use is that half mask. Nice. And uh, what style of silicone do you like? Like, do you like the silicone half mask where it's just the face, or like the full head? So the. Personally, I like the half. Okay. The one silicone I have, the Barnabas mm -hmm. yeah. mask, is actually a full silicone that has the bottom half cut off and it has silk at the bottom okay. of it. Okay. For the around the neck area. Yeah. Just personally more comfortable. Yeah, makes sense. <laughs> yeah, nice. They're a little heavy. A yeah. little heavy sometimes. Yes, definitely. <laughs> nice. Go ahead, Glenn. Now going like you said, you you move from different areas and different um, parts. Is that something? How, how does that work? You have to audition for that. Do you have to like go through like a ranking type thing? You said you only been there four years. Like, is that how does how do you go from position to position? You mean like going from what I did from morgue to chainsaw? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like something like you say, like oh, do you go to like Jim or Gene or like a be like, hey, I want to do it this, I want to try this area, I want to try this scene, I want to try this hayride, no. you know. No, pretty much every year before our season starts, we have a thing called Scare School, yes. where we go to, it's an all-day thing, and we tour every attraction, and we just pick a room that we like, that we want to do, so we can, in reality, change every year if we wanted to. Nice. Yeah. So you're not like locked into like one thing. You can always do something different. Yeah, you can you can always do something different. That's one. The only way you're locked into doing one thing is if that's what you like doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cause I, I remember I, I sat in in one of the Hayride meetings years ago and I heard the manager saying that if they want you to move to a different scene, it's not because they don't like you, it's because they want to see what you can do there. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. They, they see different potential in you and they move you to different spots. And yeah, 
see what you do best at. Yes. So talking about doing different things, tell me about some of your best scare techniques compared to using a chainsaw to not. Like, what do you think works effectively scaring people? Just the, the quick, quick in and out, like right in your face type scares for me personally. Okay. Because when I was in morgue, they have the table. Yes. And I would actually stand on top of the table instead of laying down like oh, nice. most people would do. Yeah. So I would stand on top of it and then jump off in front of people. Wow. That was that would get them. Because you <laughs> have that me going into your face at the same time as the chair hitting the ground and making yes. the loud bangs. That, that got people quite a bit. And then chainsaw, chainsaw is just, it's hard to do, but it's personally an easy, easier scare. Yeah. You can just get out there, get in their face, and just have fun. Yeah. Doing that. Something I definitely wanted to talk to you about in this interview was the chainsaw chase out at the end of the night, where I saw the video where it's like 10 <laughs> chasing one person. <laughs> <That's> hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that, that was that was definitely a fun night. <laughs> um, no, that was all all the attractions were closed except for the den at that point. And then we had I think at that point in time we had twelve of us in the den, wow. <laughs> and there was only there was only two customers still in the house. Wow! So you can just imagine twelve chainsaw actors running after two people. <laughs> the video is excellent. I'll link his Instagram down below. You can check it out. <laughs> yeah, that that was that was definitely fun. <laughs> but throughout the night, like how grueling is that? The chainsaw actor. I mean, we, we've talked to Chainsaw Actor from Field. Um, Stitch, in yeah. Past. Stitch, yeah. Um, and, we, and we talked to him about it, but, like, in your opinion, like, that's got to be, like, the most grueling thing you've probably done at Field, right, being a Chainsaw Actor? Oh, absolutely. It's it's not easy to do. It's definitely physically demanding. Like, at the beginning of the night for first two hours or so, you're just pumped, going at it, having fun. And then by the end of the night, last couple of groups, your arms are just sore, you're tired, and you don't you don't want to be there anymore. But <laughs> it, it's it's worth it at the end of the night. Is it at the end? Do you like sometimes just mix it up where you just put the chainsaw down? And you're like, I'm done with this for right now. I just stop scare people. <laughs> the, sometimes, sometimes because every there was one time we ran out of gas. Oh I no! <laughs> couldn't couldn't really use it, so I took a I took a broom and just started scaring people with a broom. <laughs> just... Oh, that's funny. Oh man, because the the most unique way of scaring someone I heard one time was someone was scaring somebody on the hayride at Field Screams with a corn cob. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We we've gotten people with corn cob, like fake rubber fish. Yes. It, it, there's a bunch of different things that we have that people use. Now, working in that environment in the den for Chainsaw and Nocturnal is very different because Nocturnal is that moving floor. How do you work with that? At first, it's it's tough to work with that because mm -hmm. you can easily lose your balance, especially yes. if there's a ton of people coming through at the same time. And it's just moving, rocking it all over the place. Yeah. But, but – but eventually, you, you can stand in there and get the groove of how the floor will move, and it's it's not too bad towards towards the end. Okay. Now, do you guys normally chase them out all that distance, or do you just go a certain distance? So, we do not chase out the whole distance. Okay. And when you're walking out the path, you'll notice on the one side, there's plywood, and that mm -hmm. plywood ends at a certain point. Oh, uh, okay. We, we chase to the end of that plywood. Uh, okay. That's where we stop. Okay, okay. So, like, right past, like, the now you're finished run kind of sign. Right? Yeah. 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 Okay. That's cool. I thought it was funny. When, when I went through one year, um, one of you guys was coming back from a break, going down one of the, like, hidden staircases and still came after us. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, have you been to – have you gone through, like, Field of Screams? Like, have you gone through it before an actor or, like, as an actor, have you gone through the whole thing? Or have, I have you only seen it, like, during the, the day and, like, you know, during, like, the school? No, I, I absolutely have gone through a few times. Uh, I went through the Christmas event 
five years ago when they started that, when they had the uh, Hayride open for the Christmas event. So it was oh, really? Hayride, Asylum, and Den. Hmm. Nocturnal was not open that night. And then there, two, two or three years ago, I would go on a Sunday and just walk through with a customer with a couple of friends. Yeah. What's your favorite attraction out of the four? Oh, geez. Uh, <laughs> Don't get anybody angry. <laughs> I, I know. That's, that's tough. <laughs> tough to answer. You're going to have to plead the fifth on that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So you can say all. You can say all of them. That's yeah. fine. <laughs> no, yeah, they, they definitely all are completely different attractions. Yes. You 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 won't get the same show each, each time you go through. So to, no. to say which one's your actual favorite could be completely different the very next time you go. It's 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 changing. Yeah, <laughs> not Nocturnal is one of my favorites always. I really do enjoy that. There's so many unique things, especially that new tree of death. Last year, oh yeah, it's yeah. so good. You'd love it, Glenn. It's like this massive custom tree they built with light up pumpkins on it. It's it's awesome. Oh, nice. It's really nice. All right, so we've talked about scare techniques. We talked about going through field screams. But have you gone to other haunts? Like, what is your favorite haunt outside of field screams? So yeah, we with field screams we take a haunt trip every year. We okay. change it up. We went to Bates Motel this past year. We okay. went to um uh what's that one in maryland aberdeen maryland aberdeen. legends of the fog oh legends, legends of the yep. fog yeah. yep i've been to that one i uh hit up penhurst and um nice yeah terror labs i did both those on the same night one night yes nice but one of my favorites outside of field is mm -hmm. uh honestly probably reaper's revenge Yes. I just love that place. Oh, it's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, what part of that do you like? Do you like the whole show or like what part do you like the most? Like Lost Carnival, Sector 13? See, for me, I just, I love, I don't know why, but I love clowns. So the carnival <laughs> is just great, great to me. Did you get to see the 3D Funhouse too, the Delirium? I, I don't remember if I did. Because that's newer. They put that in 2020. Okay, yeah. I would have went there in 2019, so I, I okay, wouldn't yeah, have seen that. I missed it. It's really cool. They've improved over the years, too. They've added more to it. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'll have to get back and check it out at some point. Yeah. They did massive improvements to the Hayride last year. They changed a lot. So. <laughs> All right, Glenn, go ahead. Next question. Do you – um how closely do you follow, like, um like reviews? People who do obviously you follow John and and you follow me and you, you've seen our videos, um, but do you follow like how closely you follow and like do you take um, reviews into consideration of like ah oh, someone says like ah oh, they could have been better or this could have been better like how close do you follow reviews and take it to heart? So I honestly follow them pretty pretty well. Okay, like, nice. If if I see somebody on. If I watch a YouTube video or something, somebody said this chainsaw scene wasn't the best, and I happen to be in that scene, I'll be like, okay, I need to work on something. I need to make myself better, and then I, I do that. Okay. But yeah, I, I do definitely follow that up, look at different reviews of what people are saying. Did you look at reviews like uh, when you were the in the mortician? Did you look at different reviews of what people said about that too? I did not. Because okay. at that point in time, that was only my first full year. Oh, okay. Okay. So I wasn't it. sure how it was going to go. But now yeah. that I'm on coming off my fourth season, that I start I start looking into that a little bit more. Now, talking about being there for four years, you've actually won mobile awards, like the banquet you guys run after the season. Tell everybody about that. So I have won awards for all years that I've been there. My first year, I won Best Den Actor. Nice. And my second year, I also won Best Den Actor. And then this year, I got my uh, Workhorse Award. It's pretty much an award that if the manager asked me to do something or move places because he is in need of somebody there, I'm willing to do it, willing to do whatever they ask of me. 
Nice. But yeah, so yeah, three years I've been there, three awards I've gotten. Great. And you got a jacket too. I did. I did. Yeah. The Phil Screen staff jacket. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Nice. Now, when you do your like off season like events, is there one that you particularly like, like Christmas or Valentine's or St. Patrick's Day or halfway to Halloween? Which one stands out to you the most? I I, I love doing the Christmas event. It, yeah. It's it's definitely fun for me. Yeah. <laughs> they're all they're all different. It's but yeah, personally for me, Christmas is one of my favorites to work. Yeah, I, I went to the Christmas event a couple of years ago and I had so much fun and everyone was having such a great time. <laughs> do, do you like doing makeup, like getting makeup on your face? Or do you prefer the masks? Because I know that's like a whole process of getting in costume and everything. Oh, it just depends on the night. Like if it's going to be a hot night, yeah, I try not to get makeup because it all the sweat will just drip it all off and... Uh, it won't okay. look good at the end of the night, so I just go with a mask then. But if okay. it's a cold, cooler night where I'm not going to sweat as much, I, I will do makeup. Okay, okay. What is your, like, go-to makeup? Is it, like, war paint, or do you like an actual, like, detailed design on it? So with my Butch character, I have that half mask, yes. as I said earlier, and then I usually do a cut right across my forehead. Ah, uh, okay. I either do that or I take some of our makeup paint, yeah, blood, and just dap it on like half of my face so it uh, makes it look like half my face has been burned off gotcha gotcha nice <laughs> do you get pictures with people all the time outside the home uh, all all the time especially when i was in den chasing people in the entertainment area yeah. all the time i'd be trying to go back and they're stopping me <laughs> asking for pictures <laughs> you don't have to deal with that with a uh, knock <laughs> no, no not too much not too much all right, Glenn, go ahead. And I just asked a bunch of questions. <laughs> so you talked about the you talked about the haunt that you've been to. Are there any like that you would love to go to and check out? Or like do you got like a top three like haunts like across the like if you could get there like across the country type? Like do you got like a top three list of haunts you would love to check out? Yeah. Um absolutely top of my list is Halloween Horror Nights in Universal. That's Which just one of the big ones I which coast? East Coast, West Coast? Uh, Florida. Yeah, East Coast. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. yeah that, that's, that's one of the top ones I want to get to. And I heard um, Six Flags has a good one. I haven't been to yet. Okay. Fright Fest? Yeah. Yep. Wow. Have you there, been there's to a few. Fest before? I have not. Okay. Okay. I have not. And I guess another one would be, um, I can't think of any right now. What about the Dent Schoolhouse? Do you know that Dent yeah. Schoolhouse? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That, would, that would be up there. Mm -hmm. I guess Eastern State when they do theirs. Okay. Nice. So I've been to Pennhurst, obviously, and I yes. want to go, go the other side of Philly and yes. <laughs> <laughs> go there, but. Yeah, that's that's about it. Nice. That's it's, interesting. it's interesting to see how they do their interactivity at Terrible on the Walls, now Halloween Nights, because they just brought back touching last year, where you wear the right glow necklace and get, and then they can touch you. At Field, you don't even need a glow necklace. They just touch you anyway. <laughs> yep, yep. We, we're full contact. <laughs> do you have any crazy stories that you can say on camera about Extreme Blackout? Scares you've done? Oh, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> oh. Not, nothing too crazy. Okay. But there's a few times we tie people up in den <laughs> and, and they would like get up and escape out of the den with tied up behind their backs and we have to go back out and grab them, bring them back in. <laughs> Oh man! But yeah, not nothing, nothing too insane. Okay. That I that no, I've experienced. No one, no one, uh, peeing their pants or uh, passing <laughs> out or anything. That that's happened on normal nights, not even extreme blackout. <laughs> <laughs> I I had that a lot, especially when I was in in morgue. Oh that yeah, happened quite a bit. 
<laughs> so how do you deal with that? I know you get taught during scare school how to deal with safety situations, but how often is that an occurrence? Like during a normal night, how how often do you have to escort people out and everything? Not not as often as most people would think. Okay. Honestly, it I've only ever had to escort people out twice in the three years I've been there. Okay. Yeah, it's it's not very often. <laughs> now, what do you do with your limitations of scaring? Do you like getting closer to people, or how do you know when someone's getting like with the fight or flight reflex? How can you like judge that? Sometimes it's it's honestly hard to judge when they're doing that, but most times they're they'll start like putting their fists up and stuff, okay. wanting to come at you, and you're like, okay, fine. Just keep going. Yeah. But okay. yeah, it's sometimes it's hard to actually tell when they want to do that. Yeah. So we've talked lots of things about Phil Screams now and everything. And I've heard that sometimes actors actually wear face plates and things like Stitch does because he's worried about people trying to punch them. Has anyone actually ever tried to attack you when you were haunting? Yeah. Yeah. It, it definitely happens. Man. But it, it, I never understand it. You see me running at you with a chainsaw and yeah, <laughs> you, you want to swing, but eh, it, it's going to happen. Now, normally when you're scaring people, do you work with one person in more of like the butcher shop area where there's like the saw and one person, the meat locker, or how do you switch that up? So usually there's three of us in between those two rooms. Okay. And then we'll just switch out like every hour or so. Who wants to go where and if somebody's in the the freezer freezer room then that's the person that would most likely chase somebody out okay okay but yeah it's just it, we just switch it up okay because <laughs> i love seeing the clips of you guys scaring people it's always great <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah it's always fun <laughs> and we we love doing it yeah <laughs> How was, were you there at the, uh, speaking of all season, were you there at the uh, Valentine's Day event? I was. Or, yes. yeah, what was that turnout like? Was that, a, was that a good turnout? That was actually a very good turnout. Nice. It wasn't, it wasn't too cold. But yeah, it, it was a very good turnout. Not yeah. like recent years when it's like a couple feet of snow on the ground. We got maybe <laughs> 10 people all night, but... <laughs> Yeah, that happened last year with St. Patty's. It snowed yeah, it did. It out. <laughs> it did. So, and you guys are doing the St. Patty's this year, right? Probably next month, right? I would, I would imagine the St. Yeah, Patty's. March, yeah. yeah, March eighteenth. March eighteenth. Okay. We're doing that. He's got it down already. <laughs> nice. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Have a reminder in my phone set up for it. Nice. And where, where will you be during that? Because obviously, nocturnal is not open. So where will you be for that? I will be back in uh, Chainsaws. I'm just not sure if I'm going to Asylum or Den, or I might just flip-flop back and forth throughout the night. Okay. Now, I didn't ask you this yet. Working in Asylum or Den, how is it different, working in those environments? Do you get better scares in one, or is it, like, the same? So, Den is definitely, for me personally, is a mm -hmm. better place to get the scares because okay. it's, it's a bigger room. Yeah. A lot, lot bigger. There's two separate spots. Yeah, and you can fit more people in there. With asylum, it's smaller and a little, little tighter in there. And it's there's not really many hiding spots to go yeah. in there. Yeah, you're right. But yeah, that then, then I seem to get more, more of the scares from. Wonderful, wonderful. So looking forwards with the 2023 season, are you going to do any change up for your costume and your character? different backstory you're going to do anything like that for 2023 so not not too much of a change for the backstory okay but yeah my costume i've been working on i recently put butch on the back of my costume so people okay. would know who it is <laughs> so i've painted that on but there's a few few things to my costume i wanted to work on to get that done you could get like a patch that says it. that'd be cool I, I thought about it I yeah. thought about it, getting a patch put right on the front. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So thank you for talking to us. Are there any final thoughts you have 
for the upcoming haunt season and all of your fellow haunters out there? So this this season is going to be 31 years, and there's a few changes you should come out and check out. Can't really say much, but yeah. there's definitely something you could come out and see. Yes. Hope to see Glenn out this year so you can see all the new changes that we have this year. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Always yeah that's, that's about it. Thank you guys for having me. Yes, thank you. Yeah, so, thanks for being on. Yes, so thank you very much, Logan. So definitely check out Phil's Screams this season. And for all their off-season events as well, it's just as intense and scary. You'll see, still see Butch and everybody there. So this was episode 37 of Fall Informer, and I'm John from The Haunt Informer. And I'm Glenn from Fall Ritual. And until next time, happy hauntings.